And why did you decide to go to Columbia? Columbia, Columbia was said to be the best school in the country for journalism at the master's level. And uh, I was in New York besides. And I like New York. And basically, I also got a full scholarship. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, you a were already uh, you know, up and running in a way in terms of your journalism career. You probably could have just kept going. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't need to do that. I kept working while I was in school. Yeah. I worked nights for AP. So I left nothing on the table in terms of experience. I just kept going. And some weeks it would be four nights instead of five. Others it might be three, depending on what was going on at Columbia. But, uh, yeah, I just stayed with it. But I thought I would teach one day, because my parents both thought, and I thought a, a master's degree would be desirable, so I thought, oh, So why that's not? why they hired you here. <laughs> because I had a master's from Columbia, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, in the long-term scheme of things, I thought that might work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we're talking about the early 60s at Columbia. Yeah, and right. So one of the things I'm really curious about is to what extent did they talk about ethics as part of the journalism curriculum, or uh, it probably wasn't a standalone course in ethics, but uh, how was it, was it built into things at all, uh, and to what extent? It wasn't built into the extent that it's built in today, and I think uh, it's been an evolving thing because the old-time reporters, and I'll say particularly in New York because there were probably six and eight papers at one time, went back and forth and uh, had newspaper wars that probably, you know, tested the ethics of some of the the people out at those papers, but there was a uh, textbook we had by John Hohenberg, who was a uh, major figure in the field and the Pulitzer Prize secretary committee, Pulitzer Prize committee secretary, and who I also had for several courses. And uh, John had uh, a lot of thoughts on the fact that the professional journalist is ethical, uh, does the right thing all the time, has high standards and is expected to maintain those standards. And we didn't, have, we didn't have a lot of issues to talk about. There wasn't a lot that was going on in terms of ethical problems that came to light. <clears throat> there was only one that I can recall, and that the old Brooklyn Eagle, which uh, was Brooklyn's newspaper, had been revived the year that we were in school. It had died and been revived. And one day there was a headline, a, a uh, front page headline, major headline, 72 point, it said, death threat bared to union leader. When you read the story, somebody was quoted as saying, sit down, you idiot, or you'll have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and we all thought that was a little, uh, uh, even for a paper trying to be rehabilitated, that went uh, way too far. Oh, that's pretty funny. But that's the only one I remember from that era, particularly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if, um if he was calling on journalists to be ethical and and maintain standards, like, but I mean, how do you know what that means? I mean, how do you know what the standards are? And what it means it. to be I, ethical? I think the assumption was you would know that you should do everything that made sense and was right in the context of time. And they did talk about things like that. You know, when you handed in stories, you had to have the context and so on. And we had people from the New York Times and Herald Tribune who were on the staff, and of course they. Uh, they edited the copy, and uh, you know we got to talk to them about some of the things going on. But that, there were no there were no major problems <clears throat> in in New York that year that came to light as a result of ethical situations. I might hasten to add that it was a newspaper strike too. As a result, many many days uh, that year were without newspapers. It was one of those trying to get the printers to agree to better terms so that uh, uh, they wouldn't have to have bogus typeset, but that uh, took a long time to resolve. I mean, do you think the expectation was <coughs> that people would just kind of inhale, you know, the sense of journalism standards and ethical standards just by being in the newsroom and being around professionals that you didn't really need to I, I would say talk probably, about it and explain it? I would uh, say probably just because uh, it was the era and uh, <coughs> most people thought that that was the thing to do. I. I you know, I can't tell what the thinking of Columbia was, but I don't think they were pushed to go into that uh, particular uh, uh, field because there were no issues on the table to deal with. So why do you think, um, in terms of uh, the education of journalists, why do you think that has now become an important component? Well, What's changed? To be honest with you, I think some of it became fashionable uh, just because it was a school could get a leg up on another school. 
I also think that there were enough cases building over the years that you could, you know, have case studies. And I think that uh, people became more uh, serious about uh, maintaining standards. You see books on the subject. Uh, the Freedom Forum put one out on, on principles of ethical coverage. But Robert Heyman, who had been the editor of the St. Petersburg uh, newspaper, uh, was the author of that. And there, there just been more efforts to do uh, work like that. So I don't get the sense that you think that in the days before formal training in ethics that, uh, you know, journalism was some kind of cesspool of, you know, shady activity and that finally people reached a point where they said, hey, we better, you know, get our house in order and start training uh, I, I don't. I didn't get that sense. Yeah. Uh, but I worked in small, mid-sized markets. And while I worked in New York and for the Associated Press, I didn't come across situations that uh, uh, came up that, you know, looked like there was something going on. So, well, were there young guys coming into the business, you know, in the 1960s who had a much more, um, uh, you know, activist and sort of anti-establishment streak and that there was a sort of cultural shift from sort of the old guard that might have been more um, go along, get along with the power structure? Or? They're, they're there probably were after the Woodward Bernstein situation, yeah. but it probably had more to do with the fact that the universities were probably ramping up their programs with investigative reporting and lots more how to do it with records and things like that. And I suspect that triggered the uh, information base of uh, new reporters getting, getting hired. So just to jump back to Columbia, so how, how valuable was that experience for you anyway in terms of what you learned there as opposed to what you would have learned if you just stayed, you know, working on the streets. Well, I was working on the streets. So, yeah. see, because the reason I went to Columbia was because I didn't have to give that up. And if it was a call between one or the other, I would not have given up the Associated Press. So, I would, I would rate it neutral. Okay, I got the degree. I met a lot of people who were sharp in the industry. Uh, I was, met a lot of people who were good at Columbia, uh, as in students, and uh, it was a good experience. But realistically, I wasn't going to trade one for the other.